slash careers. Uh, I'm joined by Felix Biederman of the Chapo Trap House podcast. He's a best-selling New York Times author. That is true. He's an award-winning documentarian and also uh, a shit poster and my friend. Um, you know, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is the f- we're definitely not doing this in the outro. This is, yeah, this is I not thought, something we forgot to do. Yeah, this is I did not. Yeah, that's what I, I never do. That I like didn't introduce Rod Blagojevich. Yeah, wow. I was I, I was like. So what's up? <laughs> that's a man. That's a man who speaks for himself. Yeah. That's, all right. Let's get started. Okay. Let's let's hit the intro. I'm saying it, dude. I've been drinking pre-workout already. I've been. I'm ready to run through. Oh, this is good. This is like the music that, like, you know, Jay Aubrey. This is like when he makes a video that's like the most evil man on YouTube. <laughs> like the shit I get most excited to watch. That's like the music he uses. You, you're like a Jay the, Aubrey fan? I, yeah. No, I love Jay Aubrey. Yeah, he's great. I love I, I, Jay Aubrey's a Hasanabi hit. Yeah, no. He, he's like, yeah. No, Jay Aubrey's awesome. He's a U head. I, I think he might be like a, a he Chapo might be a head. Chapo I don't fan. really know. Does he follow you? He, he fo- No, he followed me before I followed him, I think. Then, then he probably is then. Yeah, I mean, I suspect. I just I a like, lot of the, a lot of the new essayists are like that on YouTube. That's um, cool. They're all like, because like remember, you and I we're we're the old guard. No, we are. We're we're, we're like we're old heads now. Yeah, yeah. And back in our day, it was like every fucking YouTuber was like, Dude, feminism is like ruining society yeah. and you know they would all play that like same there's like that one fat one and then there was like the classic short hair yeah like they always played that as like oh they're triggered they're so triggered and it's like dude you were literally like the male version of that right it's the same thing it's, it's like <laughs> all the- of that shit everyone is <laughs> everyone is the same person everyone yeah. is the exact same person you're doing like endless you're dedicating yeah. an endless amount of content and hours of uh, man hours to like talking about how hysterical SJWs are and you are literally the male version of that. You're yeah. just talking to an audience of the exact same person, but just dudes. And that, I do like how that's, this is like a sidetrack, but I like how that's still going in a way. Like everyone, no matter what thing they're claiming, whether it's like, oh, I'm a Knight Templar or like I'm, I would have, I would have worked with Reinhard Heydrich. Like I'm that racist or, (laughs) you know, I'm like the, I'm the only real communist or like, or even just like, I'm the best normal liberal in the world. I'm the best, or I'm the best Nikki Haley fan. Cause every, there's like something for everyone. Like Mm -hmm. everyone, everyone's micro targeting. Everyone's still taught. Everyone is unconditionally. The only thing they actually want to talk about, at least Americans is like TV. That's the yeah. only thing they want to fucking talk about. It's the yeah. only thing people actually care about is just stupid culture war shit. No matter how far away from all that shit you claim to be, it's like, no, nah, if you're an American, you're an American. That's the that's the main thing you're talking about. Whether it's from, you know, I'm the only real uh like materialist communist or I'm the I'm the best at being racist. I'm talking yeah. about rotten tomato scores. That's it, it's really funny. <laughs> oh God. Whenever people show like um, the proletariat has spoken, the working class has spoken. Well, you know, right wingers don't say proletariat, but they do now. Like they, some of them do. Some of them do. Oh, yeah. God, it's so it's so gnarly. Um, but uh, they'll be like the working class has spoken, and they post like the Rotten Tomato like critic score versus the audience score, and it's like yeah, <laughs> and it's like yeah, and it's like if the working class was speaking, we would be talking about Cat Williams specials. Sure true i mean i get like people watch anything honestly but it's like they would be the working class loves nanette the working class is watching something weird like it's the mike Epps special from 2006 where he's wearing the blue button-up shirt you know who they love they love uh what's that fucking italian guy uh nick DePaula. no no he's like older like it's just people like that like they're that's the thing like uh you know, whenever people like dunk on the DSA or whenever people like dunk on uh, on the internet, like extremely online people dunk on like, uh, I don't know, even people who are like picketing, they don't do this as much when you're on a picket line, but like there's cringe people, right? Like yeah. there are people doing like cringe shit and I'm like, dude, that's what normal people are like. They're not Life's like, cringe. yeah, 
they're not like self-obsessed fucking losers on Twitter with an anonymous account that's like uh, specifically dedicated to shit posting. Like that's what normal human beings are. They're cringe. They wear like you know sometimes they wear Halloween costumes with the fucking picket line. You know what I mean? It's right, gonna right, happen. Right. Like and. If you're the Mr. Defender of the, you know, the proletarian or whatever, whether you're on the left or the right, uh, and you're aesthetically posturing about how working class you are or how much you care about the working class, like, you got to recognize, like, working class is cringe as fuck. <laughs> Every, okay. Well, everyone, I like, I think it would be funny. Like, I love, I just love the idea of the, how cyclical history is. Because you did, you saw it a little when Trump was president like them going through some of the same cycles that like left liberals did where there were people who were like, um, they were like the Obama bots in 2012. We're like, no, Trump's doing 12 D chess. And he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, those people turned out to be more interesting because their explanations of Trump actually doing something caused them to invent the greatest collaborative fiction project of all time. Yeah. Except also a version of that got memefied on on fucking uh, 4chan and then it became like a new religion that's what i mean the best collaborative fiction project of all time QAnon. It's, it's fucking insane but then you had people who were like what they used to call emo procs on the left who are like no like this is a disappointment he's like not building the wall like all he does is like take phone calls from israel and call football players handsome. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, yeah, like... And there's more truth to that than anything else. I don't know. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, well, they're both right. I mean, Trump, as far as just policy accomplishments for, like, classic Republican objectives, he really did the joke from The Simpsons about H.W. writing his memoirs. I didn't need a second term. I did it all in the first. But he did. He did, like, most of the shit that all those guys have wanted forever. Yeah. Like, 80% of it. He, he did... He was fucking awesome for like republicans yeah he like did everything that they've always wanted that they've wanted like since obama and and Most he was everything. still admired you know what mm -hmm. i mean and will continue to be like he will be remembered like ronald reagan but he wasn't like a base nationalist but like no. ultimately no one no. cares because it's like again only people only care about tv and he is the main thing that they really care about that anyone really cares about with him is like, is he being funny or not? And it's like, yeah. and he, he was, and he still got it. And he, fuck he man, still got that he shit. still does have that shit. Yeah, dude. yeah. His his latest post, like he's just been blasting. He he's so fucking good. Uh, the Megan McCain one was incredible. You know yeah. what? I'm gonna pull that up. Actually, world's longest funeral. <laughs> That's like, he needs to have limited output. That's the thing. With yeah, him. I understand him because like. I, you know, I post too much. I like brought it down because it's like you're, you're diluting, you're diluting the, uh, you know, whatever drink, the incredible Hulk or whatever, whatever people choose to drink. The incredible Hulk. Yeah. That's what people choose to drink. Not anymore. What? I guess I don't really even know what that age. is. Incredible Hulk is what it's like hypnotic and Hennessy. Oh, Okay. I did not know that. That's like one of those things we tried when we were kids because we heard it in a song and we're like, this fucking sucks. Hypnotic and Hennessy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I would like it. Now. I mean, I can't try it now because I would go to the hospital if I got drunk, but. I hate that like, they don't even, they don't even show the full thing. Like, oh, here it is. Yeah, yeah. He says, isn't it funny that Megan McCain, who's always been a bully and basically a lowlife is now complaining. <laughs> That it was she who was bullied by the slobs and radical left maniacs of The View. Bullied by the slobs is yeah. a fucking amazing phrase. It's, it's yeah, he, he is so many, he's just so, has so many heads. In any event, Megan should fight the communists instead of explaining how they beat her, hurt her, and made her physically ill. She should fight back against the losers of The View. The way she fights against very good and well-meaning Republicans... And she would do herself a world of good. They didn't put the full thing. Oh, my God. I'm going to lose my The thing mind. about the world's longest funeral. Yeah, the best That's part. the best line. That's Come it. on, thehill.com. What the fuck, fuck are you the, guys fuck doing? Yeah, just like For that. I just, I just want to know what the full fucking post is. And it's like whenever you go on a goddamn... Uh, whenever you search for anything on the internet, you can never find it. No, it's yeah. It's so annoying. Every, because everyone's nickel and diming you. Yeah. It's like... Uh, like 
sometimes it'll be like, oh, we're, we, we put these on two separate pages. You have to click next page so we can get two entire page views for this. That's why, that's why you know, we, we do need like a platform specifically dedicated to conservative truth. Yeah. Dollars. So you just go get the real news. You yeah. Know? No, this was easy when he was on Twitter. Not this watered down bullshit. But like, I, I like, we went far off with this. What I was like, what I mean by like everything being cyclical is like you had that you had the like on the right wing side they're sort of replaying the Obama crisis of identity that like left the liberals had, and then I think maybe four or five years from now, like maybe it's now maybe Biden will just be like a Democratic Trump because it's going to be one of those things where it's like. Oh, everyone fucking hates him, but it doesn't seem to like do anything. Maybe that will happen. Like, who knows? I don't think I don't think it'll get to that level because, like, there is like the closest we ever arrived at like the media doing that for uh, Joe Biden was during Afghanistan. Yeah, but like, but now with like, I'm, I'm, really say, I'm saying off. he hasn't really come close to like getting it out of the mud popularity wise. Yeah, oh yeah, no. No, I, and yeah. I don't think he I mean, how is he going to recover it? Like what? You think this like 1.7 trillion dollar uh package is going no, to recover No, probably it? probably no. probably not. But like I I mean like that there would be as a result of that or maybe like after him. I I don't know who the de I always thought that Biden could be the Democratic Trump just culturally, but they yeah. haven't they haven't given us enough of him, unfortunately. Yeah, that is sad. But I would I was hoping for like yeah, a right wing DSA, and then they have their own arguments where it's like, "Oh, is it cringe to dress up like a Knight Templar? <laughs> like, is like, like, are you larping? If you, I, because I get they already do kind of like accuse each other of larping because everyone is ultimately the same person. If you talk about politics online, you're just cut from the same like narrow section of American society. But I want to see like an exact mirror image. I want to see the exact like same stupid arguments. I. I don't know. I I I just like. Um, well, the, I guess this makes me like a bad sci-fi writer, but I just like the, the constant reminder that we're all just we're 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 playing in the same dirty puddle. Well, a version of that actually happened. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have Trev. Can you pull this up? I'm gonna send it to you. Uh, Charlie Kirk was doing you know one of his fucking tours. Okay, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you saw this on Twitter because it was like popping off a little bit, but. Um, a guy came up and basically was just like, when are we going to start murdering people? Like, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. it's so awesome here. Yeah. I'll, I'll send it to you right now. Um, and do you think they talk about that guy the way that they would talk about like in 2017, like a really active DSA person where it's like, Hey, he's like, he's, he's like out there being an activist. He's an organizer. Like, fuck you. <laughs> like, I just like, Cause he, that is, that's his form of organizing is just like going to TPUSA and being like, when can we kill Jewish people? <laughs> well, I mean, he didn't, he didn't cool. specifically say, uh, a Jewish he didn't say people. Jewish people. I don't know. But, I'm being glib, but he said, uh, he said something along those lines. Let's, so let's, I want to hear it before I start judging him. I don't want to yeah. like, it's only 24 seconds. There's yeah. a longer video with Charlie Kirk's response to it too, which I should have sent, but I didn't, but let's watch this real quick. We get a look at this guy. I think I can f see what's in his soul. Fascism. This is tyranny. When do we get to use the guns? <laughs> <laughs> no, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm not, that's not a joke. I'm People not are clapping. Like I mean, literally, where's the line? How many elections are they going to steal? Before we kill these people. So no. Okay, that's not, okay. <laughs> I see what's in his heart. No, stop. Hold on. Now I'm going to denounce that and tell you why. Because you're playing into all their plans, and they're trying to make you do this. So. There's a longer video here. Sorry, I don't think I don't think it. I don't think that guy's like a kill the Jews guy because he's saying like you know he's like this, he they're Democrats. doing fascism to us. Yeah, he's no. like one of those guys. He he wants to kill the Dem. Well, I mean the kill the Jews guys say that too though. They say like this is the Demo. The, not the anymore. Not, not since like 2016. They've always been like no, we're fascists. <laughs> Which yeah, is like I mean that those those numbers have withered away though. Like that's like. Unite the Right was bad for them. Yeah, it, it really, yeah. it really did. Yeah. It got too real for too many people. But like that guy, though, I'm just like looking into that guy's heart, like looking into his eyes. I just think he's like, what are his policy beliefs? It's probably just like stupid, like Republican stuff. Like he loves the Trump tax bill and all this shit. But he's just, I don't know. Maybe he read one of those threads about ADD and he's like, oh, I need to take Adderall. And it just, it made him go from voting to like, 
we need to kill these people. Yeah, he's just like, <laughs> I don't know. We're arming ourselves. Wait, I mean, you he could, just doesn't you, seem like a black sun guy. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, no. I don't, I don't think he is. But yeah. like functionally, there were like that guy's worldview. See, this is the thing about the Republican Party, though. Like, obviously, every every American uh, has like inherently contradictory beliefs that they hold yeah. onto, and they like believe them equally. As, yeah, like. You know, you see a lot of the QAnon people uh, advocating against like big corporations and whatnot. But like the only manifestation of that anger comes out with like Facebook big tech censorship because, yeah. you know, their grandmother got uh, banned for, you know, spreading uh, QAnon or COVID conspiracies or whatever. Um, and it's never about like their anger towards big pharma, albeit justifiable and understandable, only is expressed when they're like, they're hot in the truth about ivermectin. <laughs> like, right, right. You know, it's actually Nobel Prize winning uh, medicine. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so we're fucking lobotomies. But, uh, you know, they, it's, and you see that uh, with guys like this, but functionally, I think in that dude's worldview, if you're like a regular conservative guy in America, which is already like a super conservative country in many ways, and then weirdly socially progressive in others, um, there's not all that like he doesn't have the theory behind it but like ultimately what's that what's all that different in the way that in the way that he sees the world i mean i really think the difference is action though right yeah i will like i and i don't think that's a small distinction i don't know i just like it's like yeah in his beliefs like sure there's something like whatever you want to call it, it it's in there for sure and, but i just like I don't know. I just, I never liked the idea. <clears throat> I think for sure you can find millions of people in this country who kind of like, they'd be like the, do you remember the scene from Band of Brothers where they're going to the dude's bakery and they're like, you were, you, like, you knew the Holocaust was happening basically. And they like put the fucking 1911 in his face and it's sort of ambiguous. The show isn't directly telling you whether he did or didn't, but the, it's something you're supposed to think about and like, probably think like oh would i be that guy who is just happily baking pastries the, these are the guys now down the road i i think a lot of americans are like that and you can see it when you go on a local news facebook and it's some shit like you know a guy like stealing shit from people's cars they're like oh we should we should cut his fucking head off yeah they're like believing they're saying isis shit but I think that's a lot of people because there are a lot of people in this country. I don't, I just don't like the perspective of, oh, like, like 40% of this country would like work in a guard tower. Cause I just, I like, A, I don't really think it's true. I think it, it's sort of like a flattening of how Americans behave on the whole. And B, I don't know, like, okay, say you accept that. Okay, like, then what? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like I, I see people say that. I I like I know people who are like they were third world this or the shit like that. I guess that's a different thing than this is, but they're like, oh yeah, like most of the country is fascist. And it's like, okay, like it's fine to believe that. And you you No, I think I think fascism, when you when you talk about it, the the point I was trying to make is that like these guys are are ripe for radicalization. But like reading theory, whether it be mm. uh, dialectical materialism right. or like fascist works or whatever is nerd shit. So they don't have like the actual background to like, and, and maybe that's a good thing in this situation, but they don't actually have like the, the, the uh, moral grounding to like completely, uh, to completely create like a, an elaborate worldview out of. Yeah. They just like, it's like a mishmash of different kinds of ideas that they've right, right. learned throughout uh, their experiences and most importantly through television exactly and, and so that's how you that's how you create a guy who's just like yeah what's up like when do we start killing these motherfuckers right and like, it's why, like, why do you keep telling us that they're stealing these elections and then we can't do anything about it right it's the logical conclusion that like a guy like that just like a sort of like regular stupid guy would think right if you're like oh they've stolen all the elections you the logical thing you're supposed to think is like Oh, we have to kill them 
Because, like, yeah, if they're telling you they're stealing the elections, you wouldn't go, oh, we have to vote harder. Well, the Demo- Even though that's kind of, like, what they want those guys yeah. to think. That's they the- don't really want this guy to do that. I mean, they're, like, fine with it, I guess. And that is like- exactly what the Democrats do as well, where they're, like, January 6th, insurrection, it's a terrorist act, it's, like, worse than 9-11, or it's comparable to 9-11, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then they turn around and they're like, and that's precisely why we have to make sure that these guys who literally par- played a role, like, in Congress— and like helped plan this attack against our democracy, uh, we have to we have to concede uh, and and you know make sure that we we find a reasonable compromise on like uh, uh, increasing the corporate. Right, it's tax completely rate. logically inconsistent. And and it's like, uh, well, okay, why are we doing that? Right, like they literally shouldn't did this we with, like shouldn't Joe we Manchin. expel them from the house? If yeah, that's the case. Yeah. yeah, it's like you can't have both of those ideas at the same time. Some people are finally going to recognize that there's a cognitive dissonance there that they're they they can't engage with anymore after a while they're like wait a minute like are these guys terrorists if that's the case then why the fuck are we compromising on like voter id measures in a bill that's not even going to pass congress because like, right. not a single republican is going to vote on it but like joe manchin is now like the voice of like the conservative caucus or the republicans in the senate and he's speaking for them and we're compromising with Joe Manchin at the behest of the Republican Party that won't even vote for this thing. And you start seeing that. And I, I don't know. I don't think people wake up to to the reality that it's just like there is, a, you know, there's a lot of bipartisanship when it comes to uh, a lack of action in this country. Right. I um, think in both cases, like in, in both cases, it's, you know, a mostly conscious decision by people above them, above the rank and file voter, where it's like, hey, the the pie is shrinking. Like in the Republicans case, they're thinking like fucking clocks running out on how on this specific national project, how we can keep it this way. We can obviously change it and alter it and maybe try to get some wiggle room like they did in 2020 with cha- changing, like sort of expanding their voter base in some areas while it contracted in others. Um. But there's there everyone is kind of thinking the same thing, and the Democrats are same re, same line of thinking, if not for the exact same reasons. Shrinking pie, things are definitely standard of living is going to go. It's on a down. It's going to be on a downswing. Dream may be over. How do we get like enough people to get into this shit? Because if no one's into it, then there's just no legitimacy. It's a crisis. If you, you, but if you can keep the same amount of people who are always into it, into it, you, yeah, you either tell them like, yeah, every election is stolen by like illegal immigrants brought in by gruesome Gavin. And it's like, I want to get you to the point of saying that you want to kill these people without actually doing it. Or, you know, in the democratic case, it's like, we're going to make the rank and file, like we're going to make them like war on terror fans. Yeah. You know, over like half of Democrats used to think that there were, we didn't know the official story with 9-11. I do remember, yes. Yeah, yeah. Democrats used to be fucking kind of cool in comparison to yeah. now. Like they, there were a lot of 9-11 truther Democrats out there. Yeah, there, yeah, there were a Ruffalo lot. Mark Ruffalo was kind of one of them. There used to be cool actor Democrats. So yeah, that too. certainly not the case anymore. Yeah. But like, I, I think people like accuse me of being too soft and just like regular stupid people who are like, Oh, I want to like kill Hillary. (laughs) But like, (laughs) because, but it's like, I feel the same thing towards regular Democrats who are like, I love the CIA. I feel the exact same thing, which is like, okay. Yeah, no, they're saying, or they're believing a bad thing, but it's like, they're like, they, they, they're people who bought a fucking season ticket pass to the Buffalo bills. What do you want me to say? Like, yeah, they shouldn't believe that. They shouldn't say that. But at the same time, for a lot of them, I feel like they sort of got rooked into this. There's like a sunk cost thing where it's like, I can't stop caring about this. Um, it was the thing that they now believe was a conscious choice by someone way more evil above them. who's like, this is how we keep people engaged with it. So on the Democratic side, it's like, yeah, no, there's like half of Americans want to kill you. And there's like a, there's going to be a terrorist attack every day by Trump people. And yeah, I just, when people post those polls of Democrats that are like, oh, like 70% of them have a positive opinion of the FBI or whatever. I'm not like mad at those people. You know what I mean? I mean, they've been duped. That's not really their fault. They've been duped. 
Yeah. The FBI is woke now. So is the CIA. The I just CIA don't want, yeah. is diverse. FBI is diverse. They're getting, you know, anxiety attacks. Uh, they have imposter syndrome. They have, yeah. They have the Havana syndrome. Well, they should have had someone in that CIA video if they really wanted to be inclusive of like, <laughs> it's like a white pill head. <laughs> that would have been cool if they just had like a guy who's like, Oh, I get to work at the CIA every day by like lying about a bus ticket that I need. <laughs> it's just like taking Opanas and it's like, okay, then we really do have every type of American. Uh, yeah. It's a true true diversity of of uh ideas and representation. Is, yeah. Including white pill heads. No, everyone people make fun of me for like thinking pill head stuff is funny, but that's like it's like half of my friends like is growing up. But, so you want to let's let's uh yeah. Travis you can you can push all to the to Charlie Kirk's response here. It's like a couple. It's like once the camera pans back to him, and then we can start off from that point. Yeah, I want to see this. He's done with the bloody revolution rhetoric. I mean, this is the same as like comrade. When is the vanguard being funded? <laughs> yeah, but like yeah. on the right, you know what I mean. Well, do you think, they do they call each other feds sometimes too? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say glowies and like yeah. fed posting shit like that. Yeah. Before we kill these people. So, uh, <laughs> I love that. It, it hits. No, so, now I'm going to denounce that. I'm going to tell you why. Because you're playing into all their plans. Yeah, they're, they're this is their plan. This. That's okay. Just hear me out. Not so like you're doing exactly what we told you to. They are trying to provoke you and everyone here. They are trying to make you do something that will be violent, that will justify... Yeah. A takeover of your freedoms and liberties, the likes of which we have never Wait, pause seen. for a second. Close. Oh, uh, my God. It's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But like, you know how Democrats are always like, this is the most important election of our life. Yeah, that's it. He's doing it. No, this is right before the biggest takeover of liberties we've ever seen, even though the last one. I was, mean, Republicans one have always done that. that too. Yeah, no, everyone has the same that. playbook. Yeah. So what I love about this, though, is that like the big 5D chess play from like the Democratic Party is that, you know, uh, their their internal conflict on like a three point five trillion dollar infrastructure spending plan versus like a six trillion dollar one, which is now watered down to like a one point seven five trillion dollar one, and the endless back and forth between like Kirsten Cinema and the rest of the Democratic Party, uh, which is you know completely in line with her position on most of these things. They're just not as outwardly uh, you know uh, annoying about it. Yeah, uh, you know all of that is actually. You know, uh, so that they can bring in illegal immigrants secretly that vote, so you get triggered into doing something violent. Yeah, and yeah. it's not what Charlie's saying. It's not what Fox News says every night. It's not what like Tucker Carlson going on the broadcast and being like, "These are vermin. They're vermin. They're dirty. Mm. You know, the undocumented citizens. They're coming in to bring in COVID, and they're you know stealing your jobs and right. killing your neighbors." It's actually the Democrats, and and you know. <laughs> Yeah. They're, they're endless uh, pontifications on on the debt ceiling and why, why you know, we can't really raise it, but we kind of should. Or, um, you know, their budget talks. That's how they're doing it. Yeah, no. And it's like, it, it is so, Charlie Kirk has no internal monologue. You know what I mean? Like, he's not, he's not having a moment where he's thinking, oh, did I... Did I like whip some people up into thinking that? And then like, of course they're going to go into when can we kill them? <laughs> like, yeah. Did I do that? He's like, no, no, you're going to. I mean, he's like, he reverse engineered Gladio kind of. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like right before our very eyes. He reverse engineered that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, he's. I, I, I really, I really like this video because it is the guy who has an internal monologue is not the one you'd expect him to be. The guy with an internal monologue is the guy who's saying like, when can we start killing people? Yeah, because that's the logical, yeah. yeah, because that is the logical conclusion of like, these guys are fucking stealing the elections. I mean, he's obviously stupid enough to believe right. the yeah. other side of it, but, uh, but he, he took it to the next step. All right, let's see what else he says. He's going to say, just vote. I like people are going to yell at me for laughing at this, by the way. No, no, no. And I like hope this guy shoots me so I can be like, look, I can laugh at it. It's like funny. <laughs> you don't I, want that. Yeah, I do. Some, to be able to get this girl to DM me if I got shot. Using the peaceful means that we have at us. So to answer your question. Yeah, use the peaceful means. And I just think it's, you know, 
overly blunt, we have to be the ones that do not play into the violent aims and ambitions of the other side. They fear, let me say this very clearly, they fear us holding the line with self-control and <laughs> discipline, taking over school board meetings. They're the ones- Taking over really? school board oh meetings? God. He's, it's just, no, and this is, I, I feel like this is a DCCC email. This is the same Wait, thing. Pa pause it for a second. No, this is like, you it's can take this shit. and like change it to like the 90s era Republican Party. It's like they fear us because we want tort reform. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they exactly. Fear us. They fear us because, you know, uh, <laughs> we want to bring back salt deductions. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that's why it is like I get why being a Republican would be fun. Oh, you know, for sure. you, you know what I mean? Like it's like you all you do is you just you think of ways to like just like get that guy mad to get like in a guy who owns like a small hvac firm to get him to the point where he's ready to do mass shootings and then be like i don't know why you're doing this <laughs> why are you yeah. just, like being unreasonable how about you shoot your load into the ballot box yeah <laughs> yeah and then but it's all everything is just gearing up to you know give john arnold or like some other you know commodity trader you've never heard of just like a one-time huge tax break just shit like you're doing all that so he'll do that and then he'll he will give you charlie kirk like 30 million dollars over five years so you can you could be a guy who's never had a job but you have yeezys <laughs> like that's yeah. cool i'm well, sorry that's the, cool the thing um the thing that republicans do that's brilliant though is like they will latch on to like pre-existing conspiracies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I used to see this all the time. I think you and I have talked about this before, like off, uh, uh, off broadcast or uh, to where it's like, um, they'll, they'll have like QAnon rallies, you know, save yeah. the children rallies. And then they'll have like, you know, like a district representative or something that's like running for County commissioner or some shit, you know? Uh, also at that QAnon rally, talk about defunding public education right. so we can bring in like private schools, like school choice. Yeah. And it's like, why is that a conversation right now? Because they added that into the package. So now you might be like more interested on the save the children. Like, whoa, what the fuck? Democrats are doing pedophilia stuff. And all of a sudden you're conditioned into thinking, well, this is also a position that I could agree with. School choice. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you we're at a save the children rally and we're talking about school choice. They are. Yeah. <clears throat> They're very good with like adding their weird agenda items Synergy. into shit like that. Yeah. Synergy. Like they definitely. Yeah. They have like brand consultants and shit who, you know, they studied advertising at the new school. Yeah, and they're like children's school, children's school. Yeah, they Boom. they go to yeah. they go to Yale, and then they fucking join the Manhattan Institute, and they sit around and like find new ways to get people angry. Yeah, and then go on the Tucker Carlson broadcast to talk about it. They just have the other thing. Like, if we're just going to be objectively looking at their operation and be like, how well run is this? There are some things that I think are ridiculous. Like, I don't think I don't think they're getting that good of a yield off Charlie Kirk, but. Then you have other things where it's like, we're going to have a guy whose entire job, like the only thing he does is like, goes around like every private school in America and just finds like an annoying teacher, like a teacher like said something annoying yeah. about white fragility. Yeah. And then you'd be like, look at this. Isn't this guy an asshole? And just like show you all of those guys, like every single one in every America. Every single time a teacher at a public school goes uh, and talks about like white fragility or says like you know communism wasn't all that bad or something you will hear about it right right it will make the rounds on facebook and maybe if it he reaches like terminal velocity you will hear about it on fox news and it'll become national news yeah they have so many people on the payroll like that who they're getting like a huge yield off of yeah and i just like on the democratic side okay you have like media matters and media matters like some media matters stuff is like, oh, I will be honest. Some of those clips are like, good job. That's a funny one. Yeah, that shit, oh, like yeah. You know, all the Sean Hannity vaping stuff, like all the. <laughs> all I, that think, shit, I yeah. think most like, of what they find is funny to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. This yeah. is funny. Yeah, yeah, but there's no one like. There's no one on the Democratic side who's like, oh, we're gonna find like the most annoying like racist teacher. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
It, it yeah, happens yeah. every now and then. It, every, it but there, it, that's no one's job. Like no yeah. one. I think like if I was the Democrats and I was like really trying, um, you know, I would I would do kind of a money ball thing. I would like get the most out of the, the the money. I would get the most out of David Geffen bucks. And yeah, I would. The way you like push this stuff culturally is just convince people not. Not so much that the other side is evil because it's like, that's a full lane. Everyone's doing that. The real thing that like pushes people is just like, it gets people to talk about this shit endlessly is like convincing people the other side's like annoying. Yeah. But they don't have, they don't have anyone on payroll doing that shit. It's all like, it's all stuff like, you know, oh, like look how bad this thing this guy said, which is like, yeah, in a lot of cases it is bad, but that doesn't, that only works on so many people. A lot of people are just going to see that and be like, well, I say bad stuff. Yeah. No one's going to be like, oh, I'm annoying, even though most people are annoying. Yeah. Um, the uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about with respect to this was, I mean, I guess like like a lot of these dudes are, are uh, pumping out this kind of content. You know, you got Charlie Kirk speaking for the working class. You and I briefly touched on it earlier. And then you have Steven Crowder speaking for the working class. And like the only way that they're speaking for the working class is just by being, you know, bigoted. Like that's right, it. right, right. It's just like, oh no, like and and we have like a our version of that on the left, I guess. That's uh, me. In like extremely online. No, I'm talking about like <laughs> I'm talking <laughs> I'm about like over that lane. Um, you know, I don't even want to name them because, like, they're irrelevant for the most part. But, like, just they're all just, like, those. conservatives. But conservatives who simply just say, like, I care about the working class and, like, unions should exist or something. Maybe even in most instances, they don't even bring up unions. Um, but ultimately, that all falls apart the moment that there's, like, a conversation even about, like, Elon Musk made $35 billion dollars in a matter of like 24 hours because Hertz decided to buy 100,000 Teslas for their rental program. Right, right, right. And it's like, now Elon Musk is the richest person. And like to the average human being, like that does not track. That's fake. You know what I mean? That's like numbers were moved around a little bit and all of a sudden, this motherfucker is the richest dude. Like, how does this make sense? Make this make sense to me. But conservatives immediately fall apart because they have to do what their primary objective is, which is to defend the wealthy, and right. make sure that, like, you know, you have a lump and pro line of defense against uh, any sort of, like, action against uh, any sort of action that, like, takes away from the profit margin, whether it's, like, workplace organizing or even, like, wealth uh, redistribution policies. So immediately, like, Steven Crowder is like, oh, well, Elon Musk earned that. And it's not for you, you fucking losers. Like, right. Ugh. And it's like, okay, yeah, real... Real working class hero right there, Steven Crowder. Thank you for that. Brilliant, brilliant analysis. And I don't know. It's just, it, it's always, I think we should show that more. Like, I think that should be a thing that Democrats should hyper-focus on, but they can't because they themselves are also the right, same. Right, they're, they're, they're their own billionaires. Yeah, yeah. they're the, they're, yeah, exactly. They want to defend the billionaires too. Um, but speaking of uh, billionaires. The, the Elon Musk thing is, and this is the unstated, like, other thing about it. The average person who, like, knows who the Elon Musk is, I would bet, I don't really, I don't really, like, trust, like, highly specific polls like this, but I bet I get, in just what I would guess it's like out in the world, I would guess most people who know about him, like, kind of think he's cool. Yeah. Which is, like, which is, like, just a failure in messaging by like, kind of everyone. Because, okay, we talk about him, he's worth $36 billion more. Why did that? It happened because everyone has decided that Tesla, which many people have made a, a very convincing case, is just like a money laundering scheme. Yeah. It very well could be. Stranger things have happened. Is like that it should be worth like eventually like a trillion dollars sometime in the near future. Yeah. That's why it's, you know, fully by the 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 value of his equity in that and like other bullshit things and you i would like it if people looked at it and be like you know go like okay i guess it's like kind of a cool car but they seem to explode and like kill people and shit and i just don't believe they are selling or will sell this many that would justify the you know 
price to earnings ratio. Hertz itself was near bankruptcy, like I think a year and a half right. ago. And it, it, it should be proof that this is like, we are, we are in a very bullshit part of the economy. We are just everything, everything, everyone is kind of doing their own PPP scam. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but instead it's like, most people who know about this guy are like, oh, that's the guy who's like, does spaceship. That's cool. Yeah. He does spaceship and he, uh, spaceship and he posts. Yeah. And like, and again, this goes back to like a lot of the people, a lot of normal people are just cringe. So when they see like that nine gag style meme, they're like, that's funny. I like that. Yeah. That's like me. That's a meme I would share. You right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I don't see people sort of cast Elon Musk as like a classic, like robber baron type billionaire, but I just see him as like, it's like if someone told me the sham wow guy was worth $300 billion, I'd be like, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> than he was, I'd be like, okay, something is fucked up here. I don't know what it is. We got to figure it out. <laughs> how does that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, how does that not, like, immediately fire a synapse in your brain where you're like, this literally does not make sense. It's crazy. Like, and, and you know, we've we've often talked about the the financialization of, like, uh, like every vertical mm -hmm. in American industry where... You know, you can get a better return uh, and and a boost on your stock prices by downsizing rather than like increasing your output. Yeah, and like truly earning revenue by uh, you know creating more products or even making something that's different or unique. Uh, it's all about brand positioning. Elon Musk does a pretty good job with that. Both like when he personally makes himself seem like a normal person. Yeah, I guess as best as he can with like shitty fucking deep fried memes or, you know, doing space stuff, but like putting himself as like the brand spokesperson in a similar way to Steve Jobs. Um, But it, ultimately, it's all, you know, all of it is just a fucking endless sequence of schemes. And the as long as you economy. have what? Well, yeah. As long as you have enough people that have also done their own schemes beforehand and like have a bunch of capital and have a bunch of power as a consequence of that, uh, as long as you can get them on and have them also be your advocate because now they have a vested interest in your success and like to make sure the grift continues, you're fine. And uh, you can always, you know, rely on the government to protect you too in the end. Yeah. So many of those uh, tech billionaires, like they're billionaires off of companies that like have never turned a profit, like lose X amount of money every month. Their target is to lose like, reduce that amount of money that they're losing and the thinking and the valuation with a lot of them is oh no they can just we're just gonna have them keep operating at a loss until they have like monopoly power yeah and they're near monopoly power in the market and could set prices and yeah it's like it's like that should be i feel like that should be a red flag i mean i guess clearly like banks and shit are like yeah no we can just keep lending them money because we think ours is gonna take over but that is it just strikes me as a very strange part of the economy. And now it's, it's a huge, huge portion of our new billionaires are that like, I almost like, I, I, I almost like wish we had uh, more John Paulson's who's like, you know, he's an awful Republican dude, but he's the guy who made like $6 billion on like four trades in 2008. Wait, really? He, yeah. He was the hedge fund guy who bet on the housing market collapse and the credit default swap. I mean, like, that, that's at least that's more honest than well, yeah, because the like, fuck we're doing now with, with him. It's like, man, like you're like, you, obviously, like guy's evil. He's fucking, you know, funding like yeah, charter schools and like all this shit and probably is, you know, bundled tons of awful shit. It's like a New York Republican dude. Um, at the same time, I respect I respect him because I love gamblers. And it's like, at least I can. <laughs> Man, at least you made that money by gambling. That's awesome. I wish you were a better guy, but like, hey, fuck it, man. We're all trying. <laughs> okay. I at least like, I don't think your thing's like fully a scam, you know? So uh, speaking of scams, and I, I need a segue in here. Uh, yeah. Democrats are uh, planning a tax to pay for the Biden agenda that would affect 700 of America's super rich. All right. It's called the billionaire's tax. Proposed tax on the wealthiest people in the United States would include Elon Musk, friend of the show, yes. Jeff Bezos, my boss, 
Bill Gates, uh, Illuminati, Mark Zuckerberg, also Illuminati, and Charles Koch. So on Wednesday, they unveiled the new billionaire's tax proposal. Now, this is on the tail end of, uh, you know, the $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation infrastructure, human infrastructure package, which of course has to be, everything has to be infrastructure because you can't like, Americans are just not conditioned to thinking like healthcare is mm -hmm. a fucking human right. And, yeah. uh, you know, you can't just be like, no, this is a good social safety net. So you have to like lie to them and tell them it's actually infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which yeah, is yeah. so yeah. stupid, but yeah. whatever, whatever fucking works, right? And uh, obviously uh, the original plan was supposed to be six and then it immediately went down to 3.5, which Joe Manchin's original number was $4 trillion back in January, you know, before this became like a reality. Every time they meet him where he's at, he's like, oh, I actually meant half that. Yeah, no, I was just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I was just lying. Yeah. Um, you can't trust a dude on a houseboat, dude. I just, you know, I'm sorry. Anyway, like, uh, so they unveiled that and it's an entirely new entry in the tax code designed to help pay for Joe Biden's sweeping domestic policy package and edges party closer to an overall agreement on a shrunken version of the administration's original $3.5 trillion flagship legislation. The proposed tax would hit the gains of those with more than $1 billion in assets or incomes of more than $100 million a year. And it would begin to shore up the big social services climate change plan Biden is bracing to finish. Um, obviously, uh, you know, this is both. Do you, do you think this will, do you have any idea? Like, do you think this will ever pass? I think it would pass. Okay. I think the thing, the biggest problem they have with this right now is that this has just been going on too long. Anytime the Democrats are stuck in a legislative process, yeah. it just, it, it will tank how much people care about and how much people, ACA. people who like hyper news, hyper news media consumers will actively want it. Every month that it goes on past the first month, we'll just fucking demolish it. Obamacare. Yeah. This exact same thing happened right. with Obamacare. Right. right. Otherwise, supposedly incredibly popular uh, policy that was supposed to be popular, which essentially became a wealth transfer for in, uh, insurance companies. But like um, the ideas within Obamacare that are super popular were completely lost in a conversation because that that period, that window gave Republicans an opportunity to just shit all over it, lie about certain uh, aspects of it, you know, death panels, whatnot. Um, and and uh, to the average American, they they thought, oh, man, I fucking hate gridlock. These these dipshits can't do right, anything. Right, right. And it was that was all because true. like Obama punted the Congress. He was like too afraid to touch it that much. Yeah. And I mean, I guess it worked out for him. Everyone likes him. But, uh, you know, sort of, sort of I... I feel like what Joe could do here is he could be like, all right, fuck it. This isn't going to happen. Wait like two weeks. And then like the exact same thing with the billionaire proposal. Then I think it would have a significantly better chance of happening. Yeah. I don't know how good, I don't know what significantly brings that chance up to really. And yes, this sounds like a stupid idea, but I am, I am tailoring it to how we cover things in this country. Yeah. At the we heart have, of the we proposal. We have short memories. Uh, by the way, at the heart of the proposal, there's a change in what the federal government will consider income for the wealthiest individuals in the country, rather than just basing tax on a paycheck a billionaire receives from a company, because like Jeff, oh, yeah, Bezos, Jeff Bezos' salary make like is like 75K. Yeah, 75K a year. Um, he did when he was in the charge. Ta yeah, the tax would target the unrealized gains of billionaires, which includes the billions of dollars of shares they hold in their companies, right? And uh, I don't even understand how they would like they would write this into the tax code. It's like, what? What are you gonna just like name them? <laughs> it would be. It would be pretty. Un, it would be pretty unprecedented, right? There's not, yeah. like something this specific is. I I don't know how many times we've done something this specific in you know the last sixty years. It would be cool, but it, so is it? Like, is it? They're saying like, you owe this amount if you don't have that on hand liquid. You have to sell X shares to pay for it. Because that would be I. The problem is, as always, the courts. This seems like courts would murder this. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, they're, because they're, they're they're going to argue. Well, like, well, the government shouldn't like just if you haven't broken a law, the government shouldn't force you to you know sell your company, even though it's like yeah, who gives a shit? But that would be the argument they'd have in court. Yeah, 
And I the think, court system would absolutely eviscerate this. Yeah. I mean, this is literally what the court system is designed it's, to yeah. destroy. Yeah. That's this why, that's why like, these guys pay for the Federalist Society. Yeah, th this and, like, allowing Nestle to use slave labor and keep, like, you know, taking over the water supplies of, like, indigenous communities is literally the entirety of the, the justice system all the way from the lower courts to the fucking Supreme Court, um, as you also pointed out with the Federalist Society. So, um, I, why can't they just... I mean, why can't they just do like a normal wealth tax? Why can't they do something where it's like, all right, everyone has ways of hiding this shit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we know who the billionaires are. Everyone has to give us like X amount. Why can't they just do that? The thing that is frustrating about this conversation is that people will always be like, well, how how are you going to tax like, you know, capital gains that are unrealized? Like, my, my, my. Right, like, right, right. Well, you fucking do that with houses. You can just literally yeah, have same idea. You can literally, it's the same exact concept. You can, uh, you can have a group of individuals who uh, calculate precisely what the unrealized gains would look like on a fucking company like this, uh, and and you know, force the hands of the mega wealthy to potentially pay. But there is no enforcement mechanism. The IRS is gutted. They actively avoid going after the super wealthy because they just do not have the manpower. Oh yeah, and, and if you're poor, that's who gets all, like poor yeah, exactly. Get audited. Like it's, it's like a bad system. It's it's really fucked up, and uh, I don't think that I don't think the it, there is no way to like regulate this, which is precisely why I think that's the reason why you know. Oh, you think they made it to like set up to fail? Yeah, that's why Kirsten Maybe. Cinema is like on board with it, despite the fact that uh, you know we can't even get back to a top marginal tax rate that was mm -hmm. pre-Trump or a uh, corporate tax rate that was pre-Trump, right? Right. Um, and that's fucking bananas to me that like uh, I don't know, more people aren't just pointing out the fact that like Kirsten Cinema, for example, when she wasn't in power but she was still in the Senate, voted against Trump's. Uh, uh, tax cuts for the mm -hmm. wealthy. Yeah, you know what I mean. And now that she's out of, uh, now that she's actually in a seat of power, uh, is actively dismantling this agenda. And uh, some of the worst parts about this, including you know one of my favorite uh, people in Congress, Bob Menendez and Kirsten Sinema. Bob Menendez, I I, I like, love him. He's my favorite because he's just he's such a piece of shit. He is like he an had zero redeeming crook. qualities. He's like so. He's not even like. With cinema, I like look at her and I'm like, what? Okay, so do you just like want people to like be mad at you? That's yeah. like part of it. And I'm like, when someone is like that, I'm I immediately want to know why they're like that. With Bob and Mendez, Menendez, it's like, oh, you're just a crook. Yeah, you're just like, like a, a shitty East person. Coast crook. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah. I like, I like it. Yeah, like yeah. when Kirsten Cinema wore this denim vest uh, on the floor of the Senate. You got to see this. It's so good. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you've seen this yet. I just want to show this. They're I love just, that the Democrats still like ride with Bob Menendez. They're like, yeah, he should be a senator like forever. One hundred and fifty. <laughs> no one's like, hey, you tried to torpedo the Iran deal. You tried to do all this shit. Like, no one likes you. <laughs> I okay. Just, I just want you to see for those listening at home, Senator Kirsten Cinema is wearing a denim vest. Damn. You know, Mitt Romney was sprung seeing that. Oh yeah, he was hard. He was so hard. He's never met a woman like this. This is like, he's doing 500 days of summer. <laughs> he really is. He's like, have you seen the videos of them like talking? I have not. It's so Are like- Are they into one another? Like you can sense a little bit of I don't sexual think she's as into him. She would be like, oh, he'd be an interesting screw. I don't know what she talks like. <laughs> that's, not, <laughs> that's, that's, no, that's I don't, I don't know why I made that's her sound canon. like that. <laughs> no, she sounds like yeah, that. She's like a gross bartender from North Dakota. Yeah. Oh, I'd like to see how he screws. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's like, he's way more sprung for her. She was wearing some like bullshit like shirt that said like phenomenal woman or so like I, or like cool creature. Or something. I don't know what the fuck it said. But Mitt Romney was like, Oh, you're gonna break the internet with that because that's the most current cultural reference he has. Yeah, is break the internet. Breaking the internet, and it's like he's sprung as fuck because, like, no, Anne's like Anne's like bad. You know, like she's Anne's like what? Are, they're like seventy five. Bro, like, Mormons, like, Mormons, like fuck. Great. Like, yeah. they they fuck. No, Mitt Romney probably like beasts his wife and shit, but <laughs> for sure, for sure. And if he's just soaking, he probably like. He can probably do this thing where he's just, he never gets out of there, but he like spins his body. 
like, like that's why he's fly. Yeah. He is athletic. He's super athletic. He definitely works out. Yeah, but like, he's never met a woman like like he's never met like an epic woman. He's never. Have you you ever seen the Senorita Awesome? Thing? <laughs> no. What is that? Oh man, I don't even know how I'd pull it up. It's from like Scream Queens. It's just like a. Yeah, some people will know what I'm talking about. I don't want to like explain it because it will lose its uh its potency. But um, he's never met you know a woman who's like being epic. Yeah, who like her who's like wearing the ring that says "fuck you" and has like a special newsboy cap for for women. And like all that shit. And it really, I like, man, I'm not saying he fucked her. I don't know what the rules are. If he can sue me for that or, you know, he could just, he could just kill me if he wanted to. I realized like he could just kill me and make it look like an accident. Yeah. Yeah. He could easily do that. Most people. Most people. No, most people could not kill me. No, I'm saying most people. (laughs) He could kill most people. Yeah, Yeah. 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 No. Um, he's, uh, but so I'm not saying he's like fucked her. Because I don't even know if she, like, wants him like that. But I can tell when a guy is, he's like, what, I when the only thing going on in his mind is like, what if I just did this once to see what it felt like? <laughs> what if, like, what if, I, and then it morphs into, like, what if I had married her? Like, what if I, how mad would people be at me if I got divorced? Like, would my grandkids not talk to me? And he's, like, going, you can see him going through all that. And he's like, whatever the fuck they're talking it about. It doesn't matter. Like, Ultimately, Anne is still going to be on the same planet in perpetuity yeah. with Mitt. That's well, that's why he thinks he has to do it now because he's like, hey, like you're you're a dope female, <laughs> but you're uh, you're not going to Kolob. Yeah, like I'm just not going to see you. You're not coming to my planet. Speaking of uh, Mitt Romney, of course, uh, in the most Romney fashion, uh, he opposes the billionaire tax. Let's, oh, of course. Let's hear what he had to say because my God, this is. I mean, this is fire. Yeah, all right. This is why Republicans fucking hate him, by the way, because he just can't even, like, craft a good narrative, like a populist message. He's just, like, straight up just the way it is. And that's precisely why liberals love him, you know? Well, first of all, it's not a good idea to tell billionaires, don't come to America, don't start your business here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, pause it, pause it, pause it. What? The, the idea of a billionaire starting a business, like a, like a small business <laughs> in yeah. America? Yeah. Hello, I'm a billionaire from Norway. I, I decided to come to America and start a small business. <laughs> That's like, yeah, like, like Kirk Kikorian. He was like, I'm coming from Armenia to start a BMW dealership. Not anymore. Yeah, I'm not doing that shit. Yeah, anymore. because the the taxes. Oh, it really scared me. Yeah. Capital flight. All right, let's keep going. People like that. This isn't the place to begin your business. Go somewhere else. That's a bad idea. But number two, you're going to tax people not when they sell something, but just when they own it and the value goes up. And what that means is that people are these multi-billionaires are going to look and say, I don't want to invest in the stock market because as that goes up, I'm going to get taxed. So maybe I will instead invest in a ranch or in paintings or things that don't build jobs and create a stronger economy. That kind they, for, uh, they, don't they all that's they it's do like that. they, they, they already, already do that. they that's already that's already how they launder their money yeah no, like that's such a funny tell it's like oh they're gonna hide their money in the stuff that every billionaire has yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. oh no i can't believe they're gonna do the thing yeah. that they've been doing yeah um and uh it's hilarious because it's like well you know the stock market creates jobs famously that's why when a company downsizes after like you know doing another like a uh, vertical integration acquisition and like cut half the fucking company immediately they're like well we're more lean now so there's less operating costs and we're larger so like your stock price goes up and all of the shareholders actually end up making more money i guess but uh you know now you're out of a job but of course famously the stock market is always uh, creating more jobs well mitt romney especially should know that i mean as a private equity guy a, a veteran of private he, equity he literally paying capital like yeah, his entire bust job out. Yeah, his entire job was to gut companies mercilessly yeah. so that their you know their their bottom line improved and then their stock prices got a, a nice little boost. Yeah. For so for him to say this is additionally that I didn't even think about the bank capital angle there. But yeah, he's like, "Oh, uh, uh, billionaires won't come to the country." It's like, dude, ridiculous. Like what a ridiculous fucking statement. Uh billionaires are being created in this country. They're not coming to the country and being like, I want to start my small business here. Uh, it's just, they're losing the plot so viciously when they try to like describe this in the regular Republican terms that they've always used, which is like, this is bad for business. This is bad yeah. for business. At a time when like, 
no matter where you are, I feel like, no matter what your political idea uh, ideology is or what political party you believe in and advocate for, you kind of recognize like the wealth inequality has gotten to a point where it's like fucking ridiculous. Some billionaires realize it, you know? Yeah. A billionaire, uh, in the last four years, that's been an annoying thing when a billionaire realizes he can get good press by doing an interview where he's like, you know, I actually care about like wealth and income inequality. And yeah. then just like never does anything. Yeah, it's like, yeah. well, Warren Buffett, you yeah. know, the visionary that he is, has always been an advocate for like, you know, tax the wealthy more. And it's like, okay, how do we tax the wealthy more, Warren Buffett? That conversation never revolves around a wealth tax. And that conversation mm -hmm. suspiciously never revolves around like, changing the way that we uh tax capital gains right right uh on especially on like unrealized uh, uh increases in wealth uh from your stock prices and it's always like you know income tax top marginal tax rate for for uh the high earners it's like motherfucker that's not how you make your money like you're only so okay so just call it like the fucking celebrity tax you know what i mean right that's like, right, right that's like how fucking athletes and like hollywood celebrities make their money um that's not how uh, the real fucking uh, uh, people in the centers capital of owners. power, like yeah. the actual capital owners, that's not how they fucking make their money. They make their money by, you know, parking their, uh, parking their entire wealth in the fucking stock market and then having an endless line of credit, like an infinite money glitch, basically, to be able to, like, uh, uh, go against all of that wealth that they already have in the stock market. They can just forever take out loans and, and uh, continue paying you know, 1% of their like yearly increase in wealth. Yes. Uh, and, and like any policy that tries to get them to pay as much as like literally a dude who fucking works at Walmart, like a dude who works at Walmart, just a percentage of their yearly uh, like revenue that they've generated is impossible. And, um, and you know, there's a, there's a mishmash of different, uh, different interests that like our politicians have. Uh, Kirsten Cinema is personally the, the magnet for all the hatred, uh, but that's because she's, you know, that's her kink. She has a humiliation fetish. And I think, you know, I believe in- I don't even think it's like humiliation. I think it's just like- She likes being the center of attention. Yeah. And she likes being yelled at and it's like- Yeah. I mean, I kind of like it when people are mad at me. Not like that. I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want it because to be because it's like I'm being evil. It's just like- I just don't. I just want, like saying upsetting things. But so I, I like, like do being get despised. It. Like she's like, like she. I think she gets off on like being despised. She's despised, but then again, but then also like Babylon B readers are like, she's one cool chick. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah. You think there's like? Oh yeah, no, I've like, seen a ton of that. Out yeah. there? Really? There's so many fucking losers. Who oh, are like, Jesus that's one rocking chick. Um, I, I, I like. Um, I have to say, I am rocking. Like, not rocking with him, but. I do appreciate Mitt Romney because he he may be the last person in America, the last elected official, who isn't pretty. He's not being like, oh, I speak for the working class. He's like, yeah, no, I'm evil. Yeah, <laughs> like, I think that's cool. I think it's like at least one guy is still like, no, I'm like a piece of shit. One hundred percent, I agree with that. Yeah, he is like in the most like hilarious Mitt Romney way, super honest about like where his interests yeah. are. He's like, I'm a rich guy. And I care about the rich guys. I mm -hmm. will lie to you in the same way that like we previously used to lie to you before this like wave of populism uh, and adopting the aesthetics of like being pro working class. Yes. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I respect that. And, you know, he doesn't like swear words and stuff like that. So he doesn't he doesn't appreciate it when the racism gets out of hand. And yeah, then, uh, so. That also, but that's the reason why he's a cuck in the eyes of like the Republican voters. Obviously, it's crazy they think he's a cuck. It's the same thing when like, I always like, I'm so curious about this stuff. It's like, he's to me, he's like the least cuck guy ever. He's like the most, one of the most successful, like evil guys ever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's like, it's like, I don't know why, um, like young right wingers, I don't know why they're not more into the HW. It's the same thing. Because everything, like, I, we read everything from a cultural angle now, and, like, yeah, culturally. Well, because the, he's the last, like, non-populist, like, you know, technocratic yeah. Republican. But he's, like, but, like, if you are just, like, going off, like, what was his life like? What did he do? Like, he's fucking alpha. Like, he's the most alpha guy who probably ever lived. He was, like, an evil alpha man. Yeah. 
and but, but none but of them are aesthetics. into it. None of them. No, are No, because into it's him. all about aesthetics. That's yeah, why. I guess so. He was he was an evil alpha man who very purposely and deliberately, I think, made himself look more like Jeb Bush than anything else. Yeah. On camera, so he looked like uh, you know an effeminate cuck to the red pilled people. But that's like, but it's like to me, to me, I don't see how you're like Donald Trump's alpha. Because he's not, like, I get liking him, obviously. Like, he's funny and he, like, says all this shit that other people won't say. But it's, like, along the same lines. Why can't you... With, Don, with Donald Trump, you're suspending the thing where you notice that he's, like, queenie and all this shit. And, like, talks about hairspray. With, <laughs> with Bush, you'd be like, okay, he's putting on an act that he's, like, a weak, nice guy. But, like, in reality... This guy like killed JFK and like sold more drugs than anyone. Yeah, he's got bodies. Like he's fucking. He was like, well, dude, he was the, he was fucking he was fucking like secretaries doing everything. He was well, being he was, he was a bad guy. That's and, the thing though. Like, um, it's because I've said this before. Like, Donald Trump is the is the perfect like. Donald Trump is the alpha male to people who use that term unironically. Yeah. Like that's and and a person who uses that term out in the fucking wild like like it's a legitimate assessment of like machismo or masculinity or whatever the fuck is a loser. And right. they are also like petty sassy bitches who love drama and that's exactly what Donald Trump is. It's like it's it's all fake and it's all aesthetics. Right. So that's precisely why they love him. Because he's exactly like the fucking loser who was like maybe the high school quarterback who fucking peaked in high school, has like an HVAC uh, business now, like a small business. Mm -hmm. uh, like that guy sits on the couch all day and he's a gigantic fucking loser. And, and he says the exact same shit that Donald Trump says because that is the best way to show the world that you yourself are like uh, a real big, bad, tough guy. Right. And it's just a weak, insecure bullshit. Some of them, but it's like, I like in the, in the past, like five years, I sort of like went out of my way to like encounter Trump voters, you know, uh -huh. cause it's like, I, I never think it's good to like leave things and just see abstract. Yeah. You can, you can think you're being as even handed as possible. Yeah, you but you, it's want, like you, you try minds, to understand white rage. That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but our, yeah, our my our minds like do all this stupid shit to it, to it and put it through a billion filters. And so like, yeah, inauguration week in 26, in 2017, I like just tried to like walk around and shit. And I met so many guys where it's like, for sure, there are probably like tons of, Trump people who are like as you described like but small business tyrants not even that just like you know like a pathetic like asshole of a person who like likes the idea of another like bitch yeah doing all that but I met a lot of guys who were like just like normal stupid guys I guess for lack of a better way to put it and they weren't like okay so when we were in inauguration weekend Matt was like I've talked about this before. Matt was like, you know, it's like drunk and uh, you're like walking around and shit and he would see like, you know, a guy in a stupid Trump outfit, like a cowboy hat that has Trump's picture on it and shit. And he would just, he'd think he'd be whispering or like muttering to himself. He'd walk by and be like, fucking idiot. And for the most part, you know, people either didn't hear him or like most people aren't going to do anything. But we were sitting at this like, the maybe the worst hotel I've ever stayed at. And there were two guys there out front. There was one of those guys uh, in, in the whole outfit. And there was one guy who's just like regular, like dresses, like how Woody Harrelson dresses. Uh-huh. Um, the one guy in the dumber outfit was like wasted. And Matt, obviously like he sees him and he's like mutters to himself, fucking idiot. And goes inside and the drunk guy's like, what the fuck did he say? Cause I may be little, but I'll fuck someone up. <laughs> he's like five, <laughs> seven. And I wasn't like, oh, this guy's gonna like flash out. It was just like, okay, I don't want you to like, I don't want you guys to get into a fight. Like, Matt, I just want, like, Matt to go inside and this guy to, like, I don't want anything bad to happen. And uh, and so I, like, I talked to him. I was like, no, he was, like, talking about something else, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's it's cool. And the guy, like, he does what every drunk guy like that does, where it's like, okay, yeah, but if he was saying something, I was just like, you may not believe me, but I'll fucking kill somebody. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. And then I call him, like, that worked out. Luckily, no one confronted each other. But his homie, like dude, dude dresses like Woody Harrelson, talked to me. And this was a guy 
who like he was like a food wholesaler from Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And I talked to him about inauguration and I tried not to like give up too much of the game, you know? Yeah. It's just like, yeah, no, I like have an internet thing and I'm like covering it. And because uh, I was like curious, it was like this whole thing so mystified. What's just, I want to see what like one of these guys is like. And he was a food wholesaler from Arkansas. He was like really nice and really like, just won't really wanted to talk about his like business and shit and not like this was like a shitty hotel this guy i don't think this guy was like balling you know what i mean Dude. a lot of people come for inauguration or balling this guy was not one of them i think he was doing all right but he wasn't like he wasn't he wasn't caked up he wasn't caked up um he and this thing he said to me that i'll never forget is like you know i i, I know i know bill clinton I think he's a he's a great guy, and I think Hillary's a good girl. Because I'm from Arkansas, but we just had a chance of a lifetime to elect a businessman. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so stupid, but it's like, oh, I guess that's like, I mean, that's an American. And it's like, the more you talk to him, the more that you see he's like all over the place with tons of shit. And I think like with him, it, I do legitimately wonder wonder what he thinks when Trump's like, hairspray isn't as good anymore fashion week's boring like what does that guy I think, think you i think you once you subscribe once you're in yeah like you just got to keep defending it mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it's gonna take a big big crazy thing that like completely contradicts like a core value right. that he has uh for for that person to be like yeah no fuck that this is like where i draw yeah. the line you know in for yeah. many i mean it was it was his posting like trump's best assets is that he's a poster he's a sassy petty bitch who loves yeah. drama and i love that you love that um and and a lot of the people love that too but then there were some who were like yeah i wish you wouldn't tweet like that but oh, like, no, they're I'm still gonna vote for him yeah. i'm still gonna vote for him you know what i mean who am i gonna do vote for the pedophile democrat right or you know and and ultimately it's just I personally, to to bring this back to like a little bit of theory or a little bit of like grounding, moral grounding, or or uh, or whatever, I I personally think that it's straight up because they just they they have a sneaking suspicion that that they see what we all see, right? Probably on yeah. the left uh, about how fucked this system is and how like the quality of life is not improving. Yeah. Right for them in the way that you know their parents and their and their grandparents had like a vision of a better future. Yeah, and they recognize that. So there's like hostility and anger, and one side very effectively uh, channels that rage towards you know the usual suspects, things that uh, conservatives have always gotten angry at: minorities, marginalized populations. Uh, the elites, but like it's never about how that wealth is generated, uh, uh, but more so about like the bad elites versus right, the right, good ones, right. you know what I mean? Or the good ones don't even, like they don't even talk about them, but like the bad ones is what you should be focusing on. George Soros, you know? Right. And and that's the reason why people get caught up in this because at least like one side is kind of addressing uh, an a, a, an antidote or at least like, one side is like calling out the villains, whereas the other side almost always is playing a defensive role by yes. pointing the finger at blame at like Republicans and how they're bad. And they are fucking bad. Right. Speaking like marginally, Republicans are worse than Democrats. Like it, even when it comes to policy, even when it comes to, you know, all the culture war shit that they uh, champion, they are worse. Like their goal is right, to right. make it as bad as and as uh, not habitable as possible for, you know, black people, brown people, um, gay people, LGBT members. Uh, that that's their, that's their main like policy position, even if they don't actually follow through on it. Right. Um, that's what they're, that's what they're banking on racial agitation. Um, so in a weird way, I feel like Democrats behave in a, in a reactionary, like not, I'm not saying reactionary in the conservative sense, but like consistently reacting to the Republican side. They're without, always on like, the back foot. Yeah, they're always on the back foot. They refuse to, like, they refuse to champion causes and, like, fully see them through. You know what? Like, you wouldn't see, like, 
for the infrastructure bill, like let's say hypothetically, like Joe Biden didn't need like a new type of Vivans to like go on TV. Mm-hmm. Even then, you probably wouldn't see him like doing rallies for this, doing like tons of rallies and like doing what, you know, I mean, Trump would do rallies just because he had like an argument with someone. Yeah. He'd be like, oh, this general said I'm annoying. I have yeah. to do like 10 rallies. <laughs> but like you don't re- you don't generally see Democrats doing that. And, you know, one theory is that they want a cap on how how much they're able to do or how much they're expected to do. Maybe. Maybe. Who's to say? But Maybe. I do want to know. Well, I think that it's because they are backed by the same corporate interests that the Republican mm-hmm. Party is backed by. So if they actually were to like legitimately champion those causes that the values that they espouse every four years when they remember that there's a fucking election going on, um, if they were to back that, then they would go against the interests of the corporate benefactors, which is who they legitimately care about. Yeah. Whereas Republicans can and often do act uh and and act out their desires so that's like a that's always like a legislative dub for them no matter what you know trump's tax cuts that's a big w for the republican party it's a big w you should feel good about your team like we won that one and it's like dude you literally what what the fuck like you you are like a unionized electrician and and you're like celebrating the corporate tax rate uh, decreasing or uh, you know, the, the estate tax. Right. Like the, the- or, or, or it's like, I think Trump's like the thing that no one really talks about because it also runs counter to the narrative. But like, I think Trump's longest enduring achievements besides the courts are his foreign policy things. What he did there is like, well, okay. The Israeli embassy is never going to move from Jerusalem. Yeah. No Democrat is ever going to be like, we have to move it. That will never happen. It's going to be there for as long as, Israel is what it is. Uh, it'll probably take 25 years if this ever happens for us to have like sort of normal relations for with Iran because we killed their national hero. Countless things, countless things in foreign policy that he just was able to set in stone for the next generation. And it's like, again, like for most people, like why would you, who fucking gives a shit? Like why would you, if you're just like a guy who lives in, my businessman friend from Arkansas. Why is he like, oh, it needs to be in Jerusalem. Yeah. I fucking love settlements. Like, you're never going there. Yeah. Why do you, like, give a shit about this? Why do you give a shit about Iran? But it's well, like... it's because the evangelical church is telling him that you should give a shit about it. Watch that guy be, like, Jewish. Did you see that guy? That guy's just the weirdest man of all time. He's, he's like, the only he's like Jewish, Jewish person in Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. He's like... that. I, you know what I love about that guy? Is, like... If I had an hour with him, I could convince him to vote for George Soros. <laughs> because it's like, okay, if you like want there to be a businessman, like, no, I actually do agree with you. Like George Soros, like every currency trader, like a guy who made billions of dollars like trading currency is like bad. But clever. If, if you're just like okay. Sometimes you want a bad guy fighting for your interests. He made way more money than Donald Trump. If you're just like, okay, I want a good it's businessman. Just him. Yeah, dude. he's not a good businessman. But Donald Trump is not a good businessman. Yeah. He's a fun businessman. Yeah. I think that's what people really mean. Yeah. No, that's he had fun. He, he is that's the guy. Matters. He is the guy that you would be like if you had money. That's why they they love it. Um, he's gaudy, he's nouveau riche, he's rude. Uh, and most importantly of all, he desperately wants to be adored by the liberal elites yeah. that he fucking shits on regularly. Like, like if only the liberal elites were just a little bit nicer to him, like we would have a totally different Donald Trump, I think. You know, it's very interesting to look at him and Obama as mirror images. Yeah. Because Trump, no one would have made this prognostication, but as a polit- as a Republican politician achieving Republican aims, ruthlessly efficient. Yeah. All the things we talked about, he did things that will not be changed for 30 years. He altered... He changed history. He changed the course of this country or kept it on the same course in in other aspects. Ruthlessly efficient. Building a personal brand, kind Gosh. of shit. Because it's like he has his fans, but it's like, well, yeah, dude, you fucked up. You're like not allowed on anywhere. <laughs> you like yeah. you fucked up somewhere along the way. 
And it's like, what does he actually want? He wants that. Obama's life. That's exactly. Yeah. He wants Netflix deals and he, he wants, wants celebrities like, to come to his birthday party. Yeah. He wants a special handsome birthday party. Yeah, exactly. And he will never get that. The, the best celebrity you're going to get is like Scott Bayo. It's so, uh, he's probably so mad. Whenever he's, he's like, oh yeah, who's fucking old dude and Ray Donovan, Angelina Jolie's dad. Oh, oh, John Voight. John Voight. When John Voight like shows up to his parties, he's like, oh fuck. Like, you know, it's like you like get mad at someone for like yeah. being your friend. It's like yeah, that's, it's like, this that's is how the best feels. we could do. Yeah. yeah. And he looks at Obama's party and he's like, fuck me. Like, like every cool person is yeah. there. He could to have a production deal and celebrity friends, that's all he wanted, and a personal brand. And Obama, you know, wanted oh, that too. And he got it. Yeah. Because Obama's like actually smart. Yeah. Yeah. 100 percent Obama was. That's what's so fucked up about Obama is like he knew he wanted this from the time he was like seven, but the thing he wanted was for like to have Nora Jones's personal email. <laughs> like, yeah, he's such a piece of shit. It's so funny. It's so funny that he did like he killed people. He killed people so he would be like, "Oh, I want to like be friends with Swiss Beats when yeah. I'm 60. On, on on a first name basis with like <laughs> fucking uh, uh, what's his, John Legend. Yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah. And he did it. He yeah. achieved that shit, dude. Congratulations to Barack Obama. Yeah. And Trump, like, yeah, no, they're, the greatest they're not gift, the same guy. The greatest like, gift for Obama, though, was Donald Trump. Like, there's nothing better oh, yeah. that, like, makes your presidency and, like, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the, the media definitely did a pretty solid job, like, covering for him uh, for the most part. Because, mm -hmm. like, he did all the right things, right? Um but uh, but ultimately, like it's permanent now. After after oh, yeah. four years of Donald Trump and like eight years of Obama, and then four years of Donald Trump, it's over. It's permanent. Uh, Obama will forever be uh, recognized as like probably the greatest president of all time by Americans. By some people, I don't think by all time, but it'll be like it'll be like oh, he's the best like post war. People yeah, we'll say that. Um, do you? <laughs> what do you think? Like. What would like what would derail that? Would it would he have to like have an affair? No, that wouldn't count. That wouldn't do. Yeah, shit. I guess not. No, right. no nothing. I, not. I don't think there's anything that Barack Obama could do that would like ruin his image. Plus, he wouldn't do it regardless if it would. An um, Obama affair would be like it would be so funny because it would be just like all the corniest shit. Yeah, he like met a girl at a Foo Fighters concert. <laughs> he met a girl at the Skybox at the Foo Fighters concert. Yeah. It would be like, it would be the most boring affair of all time. It would be like, I don't care. Yeah, he, I mean, it's it just, I can't even see that. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I think his, like, I do genuinely think like his big bad thing was smoking cigarettes. You know what I mean? Like, that's. I don't know. Just, like, I mean, you just, you never, things. you never know with those, like someone who's that like. Powerful. Yeah. Someone who wanted it that bad. It's like, you never know what's lurking there. Because they're better at hiding shit than anyone else. That's true. I mean, that's how they got to the position they got to. Yeah. But listen, me, if gotta, I'm having an affair, I'm wearing it on my sleeve. Everyone knows. We got to we gotta uh, end it here. We got to wrap it up. It was a wonderful experience having Felix Biederman of the Chapo Trap House podcast here. Award-winning author, uh, a documentarian, all that good stuff. Uh, he is uh, He's here taking time out of his uh, competitive vape uh, organizing event that he went to. So thank you so much for doing that. My pleasure. Yeah. Just a blasting vapes. Where can people find you, Felix? Uh, you can find me at Chapo Trap House. We are on every major podcast distribution uh, platform. We are on Patreon. Uh, it, it, you know, if you don't want to subscribe, that's cool. But we are currently, we, we were number one on Patreon for like four years. And then a true crime podcast, like yeah. skyrocketed past everyone. So if you hate true crime, you have to, we're the only option. It's like Al-Qaeda fighting ISIS. Yeah, you have to be. You have to rock with us. I'm sorry. <laughs> there, but, there you have it. But, Felix Peterman, the yeah. Al Qaeda of podcasts. <laughs> yeah, which is which means not as bad as the other thing. <laughs> Wait, I don't even know. Is, <laughs> is Al Qaeda uh, better than I don't ISIS? know? I don't. Know. Uh, I you mean, you should have you should have used like I don't know like Taliban versus ISIS or something. Well, I'm like marketing this towards people who like already don't like me. To oh. people who like me. I would be like, oh, you know, I'm, I, I'm like, uh, I'm like the YPG fighting ISIS. Yeah, they already think that this is a Turkish podcast, so you're, you're. I'm like the now. Turkish army 
fighting whoever. <laughs> fighting anyone. <laughs> He's the dog. I'm like I'm like that fucking that cop who shot the Russian ambassador. Oh my god. If you're what Turkish a- watching this, I'm that guy. I'm him. Yeah. What a, that was a powerful image. Anyway, once again, folks, you can also find us wherever uh podcasts are. It's uh, you know, uh, you already know that though. So if you like the uh show, please like, subscribe, and review. Uh, we're gonna do anime body pillows soon. Okay. Ooh. Will unfortunately could not make it because he's doing a super secret shoot again. You know, he's just fancy. He's just L.A. He's just living that L.A. Hollywood lifestyle. Will blew up. Yeah. Will yeah. fucking skyrocket. Yeah, he's blowing like up and he's acting like now. he doesn't know uh, anybody. Yeah. yeah. Unlike us plebs. All right. Bye. Fuck it. I'm saying it, dude. In America, it's estimated that 4% of people in prison are actually innocent. When I saw them for the very first time, like I knew who my jury would be doing trial. To be honest, I knew I lost then. In. in 2002, the state of Georgia found Kerry guilty for his alleged involvement in a vicious rape. Only a small percentage of those people have their convictions overturned. You know, as one great justice said uh, many years ago, we don't find our witnesses from church pews. What series of events led to Carrie's wrongful conviction? Could this happen to anyone? What finally convinced the courts to overturn his conviction? From Zapier, in partnership with the Georgia Innocence Project, this is The 4%. Listen anywhere you get your podcasts or visit zapier.com forward slash resources forward slash podcasts to learn more. Seems like everyone's in a hurry these days. At Popeye's, we make our chicken on grandma time. You think grandma rush is good cooking? You've got a second thing coming, and it's a made with love chicken sandwich. We marinate our chicken for 12 hours, hand batter and bread it, and serve it up as a slice of heaven sandwich. Because we were raised to believe that if you're gonna make something, make it right, and then put a pickle on it. We don't make sense, we make chicken. Love that chicken.